Hey guys, it's Becca and Bruce, and we do different DIY projects. Welcome to our channel if you're new, and welcome back if you're not. This week's DIY project, we're going to be doing a vase arrangement in a watering pitcher. I got my watering pitcher from Hobby Lobby for $11.99 and my flowers from Publix. So let's get started. So the first thing that I like to do is go ahead and prep my workstation. I like to take all of my flowers out of their packaging and get them ready for me. It makes it easier to work. I got my flowers from Publix. I chose Publix because I wanted a place that was more accessible to most people. I got two of the 3 for 12 bundles, so I spent about $24 in flowers. Um, I can probably do about four arrangements with this amount of flowers. So once our workstation is prepped, we're going to take our greenery of your choosing. Uh, this greenery was free to me. Somebody had it in their yard, and they said that I could grab as much as I wanted. Uh, it's variegated pit. A lot of people actually have this in their yard. <clears throat> so what I'm doing with this greenery is I am creating a net. Um, and I'm putting the greenery in at different angles. So I have one piece coming from the right, one piece coming from the left, and then I have a piece behind that. What I'm doing here is taking the new growth out of the variegated pit. Uh, the new growth is kind of floppy, so I just cut that off and you can't even tell. So after I have my three pieces, I'm going to put another piece in the front, and then I'll probably put two pieces down in the middle. What this does is it creates a net below, and the net is going to hold your flowers into place when you start to arrange. So you're putting these flowers or greenery in at different angles, and it creates this net within the bottom of the vase, and that's what holds your flowers in place. Once we have created the net with our greens, we are going to begin to place our flowers. The first flower that we are going to place is going to be our largest. I have found this to be the easiest way to teach beginners on how to do a vase arrangement. The largest flower that I chose for my arrangement was spider mumps. They are a hardy flower and they will live quite a while. I'm fluffing my arrangement out because it was wrapped. To measure my cuts in a vase arrangement, I bring my vase to the edge of a countertop and then I place my flower kind of where I'm wanting it in the arrangement. And then that is how I measure my cut. I always try to measure a little more stem than a little less because it's easier to take away than it is to replace. Once I have the lowest point in my arrangement, I will find the highest point. Something you're going to hear me say a lot is finding the lows and highs of your arrangement and finding the ins and outs. Rule of thumb, for a basic vase arrangement, the tallest flower is double the height of the vase. Finding the highest point, I'm doing measuring the same way I found the lowest point, by having the vase next to the countertop. I'm placing the highest point into the center of my arrangement because I'm making this arrangement completely round. So I'll do something very similar to that on the back. Once I have my highest and lowest point, I'm going to find my midpoint. And as you notice, I'm not taking the leaves off of the entire stem. I'm just taking it off mostly the bottom and kind of leaving the top two or three. So that's my midpoint between my highest and lowest flower. And so it kind of breaks it up from being all bunched together. The last thing that you want to do is have two of the really big flowers next to each other. They look like a set of eyes or maybe even boobs. So bring your flower in between. So I want this arrangement to be presentable from all angles. So I am evenly spreading my spider mums, my largest flower, all throughout the arrangement. Across from the mid flower, the first mid flower we cut, I'm going to cut a second mid flower just a little bit lower than the first mid flower, but higher than the flower it's going to be next to, which is the first lowest flower we cut. Now that we have that placed, we are going to cut our second lowest flower. And our second lowest flower is just going to be a little bit taller 
than our first lowest flower. Now we have our spider mums evenly spread throughout our arrangement and we have formed our shape and now we are going to place our filler flowers. Now that we have our larger flower or our spider mums evenly spread throughout our arrangement, we are going to begin to fill the spots in between. The smaller flower that I chose is, uh, one of them is mini carnations. I chose mini carnations because there's several heads to a stem and that means that I get more flowers for my money. And I'm breaking off the pieces on the lower part of the stem to save not only to put in the lower part of my arrangement, but to also save for a floral foam arrangement that I will be filming and posting at a later date. What we are doing with these smaller flowers, these mini carnations, is creating smaller highs and lows. And we are also creating ins and outs, which is different depths throughout our arrangement. You don't want the arrangement to be at all one length or one size. You want the different flowers to sink in and to come out at you. You want the flowers to almost look like they are growing with inside this vase. It is very eye appealing to have different depths throughout and make sure your flowers are going high and low as you see here. Now that I'm pretty happy with the way I have all my mini carnations spread throughout my arrangement, I'm going to begin to add my third flower. I chose button daisies for the same reason that I chose the mini carns. They have several heads to a stem and I'm still saving all of my scraps for my later arrangement. I'm also taking the heads off of these stems because there's so many on one stem that it'll look so clumped together, if you will. And so I'm leaving about five to six heads per stem. Um, some heads will only have three or even one Kind of use your own judgment on that. So what I'm doing with these button daisies is the same thing that I did with the mini carnations and that is I'm creating highs, lows, ins and outs, the different depths. <clears throat> I'm going to make sure that I spread this yellow evenly throughout my arrangement by cutting the higher pieces, the lower pieces, making some pieces go into the arrangement and some pieces kind of look like they're growing out and up at you. So I just want to add in to here that there are going to be points into your arrangement that you're going to become really aggravated and it just seems like everything's looking the same and you just you don't understand what's not looking right to you. You just can't figure out what it is, what you need to take away or what you need to add. A good rule of thumb to this is just step away from your arrangement. Take a break from it, whether you leave the room, whether you turn your back on it, and take your eyes off of it for just a few minutes, a few seconds. And then usually when you come back to that arrangement, your eyes will almost find the issue without you even thinking about it. As soon as you look at the arrangement again, your eyes will go to it and it will help you figure out what's just not right about this. Along with walking away from your arrangement, another key advice I can give you is to be sure to turn your arrangement around and look at it from different size, sides and angles. And what I have discovered here is that I had a flat spot and to solve this flat spot I'm just going to add another small mini carnation and bring it out a little bit. Um, to fix this flat spot I could also bring out um, one of my spider mums or already smaller flowers in there and that's you just slightly pull it out and bring it to you. Um, if that doesn't work of course you're going to have to cut another piece of flower. You just want to make sure that it's not flat from any side. So I've decided that there's a yellow clump of flowers that I feel like needs to be placed or moved. Um, something about this, it just was not eye appealing to me, so I decided to move that out and to add in my sixth spider mum that I had that I wasn't too sure if I was going to be adding in earlier in the video. <clears throat> 
So I still do want some yellow right there to separate my two spider moms. So I am going to go ahead and break down this uh, stem of daisy buttons and make them into a smaller head. And then I'll just go ahead and separate my spider mums with my daisy buttons. So what I'm doing here is just making sure that I like my placement of my flowers, my ins and outs, my highs and lows within my arrangement. Um, I'm also looking for any other empty spots that I may have where I need to put some lower uh, daisy buttons or carnations into. Now I do want to point out if we were to stop right here and we were just to use these three flowers by themselves, no other filler flower, um, I would be adding a lot more ends um, with the daisy buttons and the mini carns being that I have a decent amount of outs. And then I'll also point out to you the empty spots. Um, I did, however, buy a small filler, and I do plan on using that just to have a small filler within my arrangement. Um, and I also have plenty of it. So, like I said, if you wanted to stop right here, just make sure that you don't have any empty holes or spots. And, um, yeah. So I'm going to take care of this hole right here below the spider mom. Probably going to add a mini carnation and maybe a little bit of yellow to it. And then I'm going to start placing my filler flower that I got. So now that I have my other flowers evenly spread throughout my arrangement and all my holes taken care of, I'm going to take this filler flower that I got. Uh, I got it from Publix. So I believe it starts with a C. I cannot remember the name of it for the life of me. I do apologize. Um, but I'm going to take my filler and I'm going to spread it evenly throughout my arrangement and I'm going to just separate the different colors, the different flowers, or the same flowers and just fill in the little tiny spaces with my filler but I want to make sure not to get too carried away with it. You don't want to take away from the other flowers. So this is the part in my arrangement where once I have all of my other flowers my flowers evenly spread throughout. I step back from it and see if I need to add any other flowers um, or colors. And so I felt like I needed to add some button daisies right there and I felt like I needed to add an end and then I'm going to add an out to that as well and kind of bring up some of that yellow to a higher level. Um, I just go around, fluff the flowers, make sure that I like the placement. Um, and add flowers if need be and I do want to take a second and apologize for my shoulder being in the way I am not used to filming myself while doing my DIY projects and so bear with me while I learn and get better okay so we're almost done with our arrangement here I'm just making sure that I've brought everything up high and everything down low and that I have some good and outs and I'm happy with the placement of my flowers um, I may kind of just separate things and rearrange things a little bit. I like to call it, I like to fluff my arrangement just a little bit. And just make sure that everything is spread evenly throughout the entire arrangement. And, yeah. Okay, so now it's your turn to do it yourself. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you find these DIY projects as easy as I have and you enjoy them just as much. If you did like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe for any future DIY projects. Also, if you do this DIY in a picture, please post it on your Instagram and tag me in it at Beck Payne. That's B-E-C-C-P-A-I-N-E. See you next time.